In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make proxy smaller versions of your high-end footage to speed up your workflow and better yet, how to automate this process for you so you don't even have to think about it. Let's jump on in. Premiere Pro has gotten a lot more reliable over the years. It's probably the fastest it's ever been, and it shows. I mean, Oscar-winning films, award-winning TV shows have been edited in Premiere Pro. Now, hardware is important, but if you're editing 8K raw red files, for example, that's going to have an impact on your machine. So here inside of my project folder, I have a bunch of red helium 8K clips that are raw files that I wanna import into Premiere Pro. But before I do that, I wanna set up my proxy ingest settings so it can happen automatically. So you're gonna go up to file, you're gonna go to project settings and go to ingest settings. And here, underneath the action dropdown, you're going to select create proxies. And from here, you can choose the frame size. In this case, I'm going to choose quarter, but of course you can choose a custom resolution and type in the width and the height here. But what's great about using these presets of a quarter resolution is you don't need to know the actual dimensions, the resolution of your footage. It'll automatically keep it in the same aspect ratio while just dividing it by four, which is exactly what we want here. But if you want to divide it by six, that's when you'll go to custom and enter in that value. So in terms of presets here, depending on your hardware, you're going to choose a codec that is best optimized for your CPU. In this case, we would choose the H.264 MP4 proxy. But if you're editing on a machine with an AMD processor that's designed for more raw files, then you may want to choose ProRes instead. So I put a link down below where you can check out how to explore which codec is best for your CPU and GPU. Now proxy location, you can choose the same folder as where your project exists, but I actually recommend going in and choosing a custom location. So I'm gonna go into my media folder and I'm going to create a folder called proxies. Next is the proxy watermark. And I recommend just using the proxy icon watermark so that way it's even more clear that proxies have been turned on. So once that's done, we can import all of our red clips into Premiere Pro. And when I do that, it's going to launch Adobe Media Encoder automatically and begin creating the proxies. And look at how fast it is. What it's doing right now is it's encoding all of the smaller proxies and attaching them to the original. All right, so while this is encoding, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Track Club. It's a subscription music licensing platform powered by Marmoset Music that lets you customize your music to match the vibe of your video. Now it has this really cool new feature called Similarity Search. So with Similarity Search, you can copy and paste a link to a popular song from YouTube or Spotify and paste it here. When you click search, Track Club will then scrub their library and find music in their library that matches the vibe of that popular track. So this is great because it helps narrow down your search. So let's play the first one here. Definitely imagine dragon vibes there. From here, you have a couple more options. You can find more similar songs by clicking on this icon. You can favorite it to add it to your favorites. You can click the plus icon to add it to a playlist. You can download it, or you can click on Mix Lab, which lets you customize the music even further. So from here, you can change the BPM. So we made it a bit faster. You can also have customization to turn off different stems entirely. So let's try turning off the lead vocals. So you can really have a lot of customizability and you can adjust the volume as well. So once you fine tune it how you like, you can add this new mix to a playlist or you can download it directly to your computer and use it in your edit. So we can pull this track inside of Premiere Pro and then we can use the remix tool to change the duration of the track to match the exact out point 
of our video edit. So that way it ends exactly when our edit ends. Nice. And Track Club's pricing is super reasonable. If you're a YouTuber and you need coverage for monetization and sponsorship, they have a plan for you. If you'd like to try out Track Club, you can use my link below to get two months free. Thanks so much to Track Club for sponsoring. And now let's go check on our proxies. So you can see that all of our proxies have been encoded. And now if we go back into Premiere Pro, I recommend going to Icon View because you're going to see in the right corner here, a little proxy icon. That means that the proxies have been attached to the original media. So let's go ahead and select all by pressing Command A or Control A and dragging them into our timeline. So how do you know that the proxies are on? Well, one way that we can know is by the little watermark. If we zoom in here, you can see that in the lower left corner, the watermark is here because in the ingest settings, remember I chose to have the proxy icon as a watermark. If you don't see this and you did select a watermark, you need to make sure that the toggles proxies is turned on from the program monitor. If you don't see this here, click on the plus icon and then you can drag this proxy icon into this menu. So you have it here. So if I turn this off, Look, the watermark goes away, and if I turn it on, it comes back on. And notice also what happens in the timeline. The proxy icon turns solid white, and if I turn it off, the proxy icon in the project panel is also deactivated. So now let's talk about the color. Right now, it's still showing as a log flat milky footage. And that's because I downloaded these from a stock website, but Premiere Pro should automatically tone map it for you. In our case, we have to override this because it's stock media. So what I'm going to do here is select all of the source clips, excluding the sequence, right? I'm going to go over to Lumetri Color and from the settings tab, I'm going to go to the source clip section and I'm going to override the media color space because it defaulted to Rec. 709 and change it to whatever your camera is. In our case, it was a red camera. So I'm going to choose the red log wide gamut and voila. Now all the clips in our timeline have been converted to the correct color space. So I've moved over to a rough cut of my rock climbing edit with the track club music. And now I want to export it to share a version with the client for a review. How do you export with the proxies turned on versus the proxies turned off? So what we're going to do is go to the export tab. And because we're exporting this for web, I'm going to choose match source adaptive high bit rate. So this is going to match the sequence settings. But how do we know if the proxies are on or off? If you go down to output, you can see that it's actually outputting it in the 8K resolution. To turn on the proxies, you can go down to this general tab and you can say, I wanna actually use proxies here. And when I selected that, it has the little icon here. Now I hit export. Now I drag the rough cut that we just exported into Premiere Pro to check on the dimensions and the resolution. If I right click on this and go to media file properties, you'll see that even though it used the proxy media, it still exported it in an 8K frame size. So if you want to export this in a quarter resolution of 8K, when you go to export, not only do you need to check use proxies, but you also need to go to the video tab here. And rather than matching the source, which is what is happening in this case, you need to adjust the frame size. So you're going to uncheck next to frame size, and then you can enter in a custom resolution. So let's update this to 2048. Now this is a quarter resolution. And now we can export it again. So this encoding process was a bit faster because it wasn't exporting on an 8K resolution. So if we take Take our quarter resolution export and drag it here into Premiere Pro, right click on this and go to media file properties, you will see that it's now at a quarter resolution. So I hope going away from this video, you feel like you have a better handling on how to handle proxies in Premiere Pro. Remember to always go to ingest settings first. So that way when you import any files later on, it'll automatically create proxies for you based on your ingest settings. If you want some more killer video editing tips, be be sure to check out my new ebook called The Video Editor's Checklist, and you can click over here to go check out my toolkit extension for Premiere Pro that has over 1,700 different presets, transitions, and more. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye! Whoop.